Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for those who are tuning in to this Promise LA page as we're uh, continuing on our series here in uh, the book of Ephesians. You know, I, I, I pray that you guys have had a great week, especially coming off of Mother's Day. Um, I know that the weather is starting to look good and uh, depending on where you are, there is, uh, you know, your your life is getting a little bit closer back to normal. And, um, you know, so I hope things are good. I hope you're, you're, you're staying safe. Um, today, as we go through the book of Ephesians, uh, I pray that this has been a blessing to you, as it, as it has been to me with going through and studying through this book. Um, you know, obviously, if you've been following through over these last few weeks, you know that uh, over in, book, in, in Ephesians chapter 1, we discovered what your new identity in Christ is. Uh, and, and you, you know, just like in any of these, I, I want you to know that, uh, you, all these videos are on the Facebook page. And so if you missed something, please go back and, and review, um, you know, and, 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 and listen to these messages. As I explained last week, uh, one of the things that I have noticed as I am, uh, studying through this, that not only does one chapter build upon one another, but they're sort of intertwined as well. And so, you know, I'm, I'm glad for you that are joining in today, but if you missed any of the other videos from the previous weeks, I want to encourage you to go back and listen in. Uh, it's been a great study. You know, again, Ephesians chapter one is uh, is talking about your new identity. Chapter two uh, talked about your, that, that you are God's masterpiece, you know, and, and uh, how he is, he is making you and he's building you to uh, to tell a wonderful story of what it's like to be a uh, to, to to be saved by him, to be used by him, and, and for the worship of him as well. You are God's masterpiece. Last week we talked about perspective, and uh, if, if there's any part of this series that I kind of felt that maybe I wasn't clear on, it was last week, because I want you to be sure that your perspective matters in this new life that you have in Christ. If indeed that you have given, you have put your faith and your trust in the in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, you know, that, that you might be saved, that your, la your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, your perspective matters. And here's what I want you to be clear on, and just to have a little bit of a review from last week, um, your perspective on, on how this walk is, because many times people have a perspective that we have to do something, or that now we need to, we, we need to follow a set of rules, and it's nothing about that. It's not that you have to follow a set of rules, but but God is bringing you to to a a, a different level, to a to a a, a, a new value system, a um, a whole set of, of of life that He wants you to live. And, and basically, what your perspective means is that everything that you have gone through, everything that you have experienced, everything that you have learned, um, everything that you have travailed through. God will ultimately use it to build you up that you might be used for purpose. Does that make sense to you? Let, let me explain it to you this way. There's, there's a story in, in, in Genesis chapter 37 um, that I didn't use last week, but I, I want to use it this week just to, just to give you a little bit more of, of an illustration. In Genesis chapter 37, there is a, a, a person by the name of Joseph. He is considered the, to be the favorite son of of Jacob, you know, the one of the uh, founding fathers of the uh, of, of the nation of Israel, and, and and Joseph was somewhat of a tattletale as a as a youngster, you know, and uh, he he was one of of twelve of, of twelve children, and uh, but he was considered a tattletale, I guess, because he knew he was his father's favorite, and so he was a little bit of a brat. And every every uh, every very young in his age, he he got a vision from God that that he was going to be a man used mightily of God. That he's going to be used uh, in a position of authority, and he bragged about it so much so that the rest of his brothers had built up resentment towards him. Well, one day his brothers had so much resentment towards him that they found an opportunity to get rid of him. They they sold him off to. Uh, to a traveling caravan, which eventually sold him off to to a slave, to be a slave to a gentleman named Potiphar, who lived in Egypt. Potiphar was a was a wealthy man. He had many servants in his, in his uh, uh, in his home, and and uh, but the Bible says that even in this, 
God was with Joseph and showed him favor. Eventually in Potiphar's home, uh, Joseph wound up being a, a leader there. And it seemed like God was grooming him in that leadership position. Lo and behold, something happened to Joseph and that he got accused by Potiphar's wife uh, for, for flirting with him or pa making a pass at her, even though it was even though it was uh, Potiphar's wife that wanted to sleep with him. And so Potiphar gets angry and he and he tosses him in prison. And in prison, there he goes in Egypt, in a foreign land. He knows nobody. And for a few years, he stays in prison and and, and he comes to a, a, a butler and a and, and a cook from from the from Pharaoh himself. And and uh, they're there in prison. I forget what they were even there for. But but eventually. The, the chief butler found favor and he gets released from prison and Joseph pleads with him and he says, hey, will, re, can you go tell the Pharaoh that I am here unjustly? I, I, I've been in prison this long. Can you have him release me? And and and, and the butler says, sure, you know, I'll, I'll let him know. Well, sure enough, the chief butler gets released and, and goes back in the service and he forgets all about Joseph. Until the day that 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 the Pharaoh receives a dream, he receives a vision himself, and and uh, it, it's a vision of seven years of famine and seven years of prosperity. But he had no idea what that meant. And, and two years later, the butler tells Pharaoh, two years after he promised Joseph, he, he he tells Pharaoh, "Hey, I knew a guy who could interpret dreams. His name is Joseph. He's back in the prison." So so they release Joseph, and Joseph comes to Pharaoh and. And and Joseph is able to 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 give the interpretation of Pharaoh's dream. So grateful was Pharaoh that that he had uh, he 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 had promoted Joseph out of the prison since to be Pharaoh's number one, basically his commander, so to speak. And and he says, "Hey, only only by name are you lesser than me, but you you, you will have all the authority that I have." And and Joseph starts to serve as Pharaoh's chief commander, so to speak. And you can see that throughout everything that Joseph had went through, through, through being sold off into slavery, to be, to be accused by Potiphar's wife, to being in prison longer than he thought he should have been, God used all those experiences to bring Joseph to a place of purpose. Now, I want you to let that sink in, you know, and, and this, this story, you could probably dive deeper into it. I, I'm, time will not allow me to uh to talk more about this but i want you to understand all that joseph had went through all that joseph had learned everything that he experienced god had used it for a purpose and it was a great purpose and i want to encourage you to to read the book of to, to go through genesis and and read the story of joseph because it has some application for you and i because you might think that that you you've experienced too much that you have gone too far, that you have missed God's calling for your life. I want you to know by my own personal experience that God could use all things out for your good and bring you to that place of purpose. You might think you're, you're in the church today and says, oh, well, I'm a, what I'm serving at a, maybe as an usher or maybe as a janitor or, or maybe even as a, uh, uh, an attendant for the kids, you know, when, uh, when, when church gets back to normal, so to speak. You might think it's insignificant. There is nothing insignificant in the kingdom of God. God can use you. God can bring you to a place of purpose, even from where you are. There's nothing insignificant. Amen. And so today, as as I'm hopefully that sinks in as far as your perspective, where you are right now, uh, and that and that and that encourages you to to seek out God's purpose for your life. I want to go from a from a perspective base to a paradigm base. Well, what do you mean by paradigm, Pastor Daniel? Well, if perspective is a change in how you see things, then a paradigm is how you do things. Did, did you get that? If perspective is how you see things, then a paradigm is how you do things. Listen to, to Ephesians chapter 1. And it's, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter four, beginning with verse one, it says, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called. Some verses say to, to walk worthy of the calling in which you have received. 
meaning that your life should be indicative of this great invitation that you have been given by God to walk with him because you put your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. It, it, it means that y your life should be so consistent with what you proclaim your life to be in Christ that you should walk worthy in that. Let me give you an explanation. A married man, once he gets married, would no longer live a life in a singles bar, amen, or looking for us. He's married. And it astonishes me these days that I know many men who, who have now been married and wants to still live a single life. It doesn't work that way. You will not be married for too much longer, amen. Or an athlete who who, who aspires to be a world-class athlete. Who, who 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 wants to play professionally or or want to go to the Olympics? They're gonna they're gonna be careful what they eat. They're they're gonna be disciplined in their exercises and their workouts. They're not gonna be slothful or lazy or or hang out at at, at In and Out Burger. No, I'm sorry, In and Out Burger is a cool place. I go there, but then again, I'm not a world class athlete. Amen. Your life should be consistent with the calling, the invitation of the relationship with God in which you have received. I hope that makes sense to you today, because there shouldn't be inconsistencies. And, and I know that, that there are many different ways to view this Christian life, especially as it, it, it discusses the, the work of grace. You know, and grace is considered God's unmerited favor for your life. And many, many will take that to the extreme and say, well, I'm saved by grace, so I can do whatever I want and live the way I want because I've given my life to Jesus Christ. Now, you know what? I'm I'm not even going to talk about that particular subject. I, I just don't believe that uh, that the grace allows you liberty to live the way you, you, you want to live and continue to sin. I actually believe that once you experience God's grace, you can't help but to not sin as much as you have. Does that make sense? If you have any questions, email me or whatever. I would love to have that discussion with you. But the Bible does say that we should walk worthy of the calling of that that we've received amen and what is that uh, you know and and many of you would probably want to turn this video off now and say oh he's just going to give me a set of rules again or oh he's gonna he's gonna tell me that that i can't do this or i can't do that and 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 believe me i i, I do not wish that this message would be uh a message about law or legalism or a set of rules but i want this message to be to to to, to, to be a freedom for you to bring about a liberty of a great life that we are called to live in Christ, a life of abundance, a life of freedom, a life of power, a life of victory, which you've never experienced before, a life of joy. Amen. The, 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 the fullness of joy that got, comes from the presence of the Lord will be yours in Christ Jesus. So what does that look like? What does that look like? Well, as usual, I, I'd like to give you three things on, on what that, that looks like to you for you and for me, amen? As we go through this, the, the book of Ephesians chapter four, um, the, the Bible talks a lot about the life that we are called to live in Christ, a, a life worthy of the calling in which we have received. And, and before we do that, let, let's, let's go to God in prayer, shall we? Father, in the name of Jesus, I just wanna give you thanks and I wanna give you praise for all the, the promises and all the tools and all the, the, the things that you have to say in your word. Oh, Lord, you have been so good to us, Lord God. And I just pray that right now you would just speak to us. You would bless us with your word. You would bless us with your presence. You would bless us with encouragement, strength, and power that only comes from you. We pray for your blessings this time, Lord. Once again, I, I ask you to hide me behind the shadow of the cross. May it be that you would increase and that I would decrease that you would anoint me as your vessel, Lord, that you would be pleading your case through me, Father. Help me to get out of the way of what it is that you're trying to accomplish, that you might receive glory. Anoint this time, Lord, not only anoint my lips, but anoint the hearts, the ears, and the eyes, that they may see what it is that you have to say to your people. Glorify yourself in this, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. How do you live this life worthy of the calling you receive verses 17 and 18 um it's a live a life that is renewed if you're taking notes i want you to write this life write down this 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 uh this value system i guess you could say uh live a life that is renewed 
verse, beginning with verse 17, it says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, and being alienated from the life of God. It says, again, let me say this again. Do not, you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, meaning those outside of faith, amen, in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. You, you know, back in the, I think it was the early 2000s, I think it was the Discovery Channel or the E! Channel that came out with a, a, a series called Hoarders. Maybe some of you remember that show. It was a it was a a real life uh, uh, a, a real life documentary or a show, real life series. Uh, I forgot what they call it now. But uh, of, of those who 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 hoard things, those who keep things uh, for years. Maybe it's uh, something that that they've had when they were younger, something that was uh, that was of sentimental value, and. and the show would go into people's homes where they, they you know, they consider themselves pack rats, right? They keep everything. They don't throw anything away and, and things of that nature. And, 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 and they go in and they see all these things lying around. You can barely step into the home because, because they're hoarding things from their past. And when being interviewed, a lot of these uh, people that they've interviewed who were hoarders always say that, well, these things have sentimental value to me. Or, or that I'll, I'll, I'll use them eventually. I just don't want to throw it away, or, or I may have an occasional uses, or, or you know that I'm, 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 I'm emotionally tied to this item. And what they found is that when they did a study on these hoarders, were that they, they, it would cause um, unhealthiness psychologically, and sometimes even physically because there was trash around that they couldn't find because they had too much stuff, and, and. In some ways, we're kind of like that in, in our old ways, are we not? We hold on to things that are unhealthy to us. Maybe they're old habits. Maybe they're, they're toxic relationships. Maybe it's even a, a, a bitterness towards somebody else that we don't want to let go. You know, those things will, will rob you. It says, it, 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 the Bible says here, and just by virtue of that one verse, it's futile to think that way. It's futile. That means it's it's nonsense. It's useless to hold on to things that that should be of no longer value. See, sometimes we we create value in these old habits. Sometimes we create value in these toxic relationships. That and I know a little bit about that. You know, sometimes we we create value in in in, in bitterness and unforgiveness that we hold on to when we grasp onto our life and we don't want to let it go. You know, in uh, in, in Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 17, there's a story of a, of a rich young ruler who came to Jesus and he says, and he says, Master, how, how can I re receive eternal life? And he says, well, you know the commandments, you know, uh, you love God, you love other people, don't steal, don't kill, all these things, right? And the, and the rich young ruler says, oh, I've done that since my youth. And Jesus told him straight up, he says, then one thing you lack, give up your riches, sell them all, and come follow me. You'll have riches in heaven. And the Bible says that the rich young ruler went away sorrowful. You know, and that's, that's, that blows my mind because here's a man, he had everything he wanted. He was rich. He was a ruler, you know, but the thing that he couldn't have he couldn't have was 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 a, a fulfillment or a fullness of a relationship with God because he would not let go of things. Let me ask you a question. What what is it that you need to let go of today? Is it one of those relationships? Is it a habit? Is it something that you've held so dear to your life that it, it's become a part of you that that you think to yourself of not having any value without it? The Bible says that you 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 you, uh, you you alienate yourself or a life of God because you hold on to things. What are those things? What what is God calling you to get rid of in your life that you may grasp hold the fullness of a relationship with God? 
maybe it's possessions. Maybe it's like the rich young ruler. He couldn't get rid of his wealth because that, he identified with that. That was that was who he was. Let me tell you something. That is not who you are. You're a new creature in Christ. Amen. You, you are his masterpiece. You need to change that paradigm. Uh, something that the Lord uh, had me write down last night as I was uh, remembering this uh, and trying to study for this message. It says, get rid of the clutter. It's blocking you from a life that uh, in, in Christ that you can have. And he has a great life for you. How you conduct yourself, your paradigm, how, how you live your life. You've got to get rid of that old stuff. You're not able, you're not going to be able to grasp on to the new things of God as long as you're grasping, as long as you won't let go of the old things you have of this world. Can you receive that? What is the other thing that, that, that we can do to live life to the fullest, that we might live a life worthy of the calling in which we receive? The next thing I want you to know is that you can live a life exercising Christ's gifts to the church. Did you get that? Live a life exercising Christ's gifts to this church. Beginning with verse 7, it says this. It says, but to each one of us, grace was given, meaning God's gifts. Amen. But each of us, each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Uh, and, and in that verse, gifts to men and women. Amen. And you don't want to don't want to leave out the women in this in this because he's giving you gifts as well. But what does that mean? What does that verse mean? Well, back in those days, when when a ki king would come back from battle victoriously, he, there would be a, a a big parade coming back in, into his home, and 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 uh, the people would see him from afar and start celebrating and saying, "The king has come back." in victory and and he would he would take those those people from the opposing people the opposing army or the opposing uh nation in which they had just conquered or just defeated and he would parade them around the town square and this was a demonstration that that there was victory that they now had victory over the enemy and and, and during that time they would they would throw out gifts to the people who were there celebrating and, and usually it was things uh, of value that uh, from the enemy or or things that the king had had uh, had acquired on his way back home. Whatever it was, he would throw them out to the people. He would throw them out to the people, and and, and those were the gifts. In the same way, when when Jesus came out of the grave on that third day, Easter Sunday that we recognize, Amen. In victory, our King Jesus conquered the grave. He conquered the enemy. He took the, the keys from, from Satan, the keys of the kingdom, and he came out in victory. And when he ascended into heaven, he left gifts for you and I. Gifts that you and I are, are to be able to use in this life. And you're like, well, what, what gifts are you talking about? Well, you, you, you can only go back to, to Acts chapter 2. And in Acts chapter 2, in the day of Pentecost, the, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came down uh, upon the pillar, tongues of fire, right? And, and people started to, to, to speak in tongues and, and, and other people ha could hear the, 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 the tongues in their, in their own native language. So there was a, a speaking of tongues. There's an interpretation of tongues. Peter gets up after he hears that, that they were accusing the people of being drunk, that he gets up and gives them a word of wisdom. He starts to preach the the greatest sermon ever told, amen? Because he, he, he was given a gift of wisdom and discernment. There's other gifts in, in, that the Bible talks about, a, a, a gift of, of an increase of faith. There's gift of healing and miracles. There's gifts of prophecy. There's, there's all kinds of gifts that, that, that God has left with us. And, and you only need to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and Romans chapter 12. I, I'm not going to take time to read it out to you because I'm, my time is almost done here, but but in First Corinthians chapter twelve and Romans chapter twelve, all you got to do is is read through those chapters, and it will tell you what the spiritual gifts are that the Holy Spirit leaves to each and every one of us. You see, when 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 we put our trust in the Lord, we we ask Him to forgive us of our sins. We 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 ask to walk with Him, and He becomes the Lord of our life. The Bible says that we are we are washed, we are forgiven, and the Holy Spirit starts to live in each and every one of us. 
And when the Holy Spirit starts to li live and reign in inside of us, there are gifts that he gives us to use in this life. And, and you know, back in the day when I first started the uh, in my walk with the Lord in a local church that, that I was uh, fellowshipping in, they, they gave out a, a spiritual gifts test. And, and it was a test to see how God has wired you in a sense. What what gifts are predominant in your life, and and, it, and it's going to be indicative of uh, according to your faith, Amen. It, it says here that uh, that that He has given us grace, which was given according to the measure of Christ's gifts. Those those are already in you, and 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 if you're wanting one of those copies, email us, uh, uh, reach out to us. I'll give you all that information at the end of this message. But understand this: that if if you're curious about what gift that you have that God has given you. Uh, maybe we can walk you through that, amen, and and, and be sure uh, that you operate in the gifts that in which God has given you. Again, you can go to First Corinthians twelve or Romans twelve, and there's there's some listings there that uh, the, there are some of the gifts, the spiritual gifts in which God gives. Um, and just real quick, I got one more thing to say. It, we, we talked about uh, living a life that is renewed. We talked about living a life exercising Christ's gifts to his church. Amen. And, and and the last thing I want to share is live a life according to your calling, according to your purpose. If you're around me a lot, you'll understand that I use the word purpose a lot because I believe that's what God has called us to do is to help people find their purpose. And, and you'll see that here in verses 11 and 12. It says, and he himself, check this out, he himself, it didn't come from the church. It didn't come from the pastor. It didn't come from, from anybody else. It came from God himself. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, and for the edification of the body of Christ. Now, this is what we call in the, in, in the, uh, um, in, in the church, we call it a, a, a five-fold calling with a, with a three- Three, the, I'm sorry, a fivefold calling with a uh, a threefold purpose: one to be apostles, to be prophets, to be evangelists, to be shepherds, amen, or pastors or teachers. And 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 our goal as as we seek out our calling, as as we uh, live according to the to the purpose in which God has given us, is is threefold: is is for the equipping of the saints, it's for the work of ministry. And it's for the edification, meaning the building up of the body of Christ. And that's what we're called to do as a church. And our lives should be indicative of that. The, the, the purpose, again, is the unity of faith. That we should all come to a place where, where we all put our faith in Jesus Christ. And I know that, that uh, many denominations has this doctrine and that theology and all these other things. But, but the main thing is to be unified in, in understanding that Jesus Christ is Lord, amen? And that we should grow in our knowledge of him. That means we should grow in our relationship, just as we grow in, in relationship with other people, in marriages, you grow old together, amen? That we should do the same in our knowledge of God. And the last thing is that we should have maturity in the fullness of Christ. That means we grow more and more to be more like Jesus, to have his character, his, his, the things that he would do that we would do. Uh, and 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 the the victory he has won, that we have won. The purpose that he has, we would have. Amen. And 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 that is the purpose that we have as a church. But understand this. I know when 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 I read that verse that some are called to be apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers. Many many balk at that and say, well, I'm not called to full time ministry. So that that doesn't apply to me. Let me, I want to correct you on that because that's absolutely incorrect. Hear, hear this, okay? If there's anything in this message that you need to hear is that you, you not being called to full-time ministry is incorrect. Let me shift your perspective and your paradigm there. Everyone is called to full-time ministry. Now, you may not be called to a full-time vocation, okay? But you, everyone is called to a full-time ministry. That means everyone is called to affect their the places where they live. You're called to affect their the places where you work, to where you learn, and where you play. Okay? 
we are all called to to affect the 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 environment the places around us with the gospel of jesus christ and i get it i get it. it's like oh man that's that's so much more than than what i imagined this life to be but that's what this life is you, you, i haven't seen anybody in the first church that 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 said well I, i'm just called to attend fellowship and, and that's it I'll, I'll 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 do my little offering i'll come and raise my hands during worship uh, i'll check it off my list that i was in church this week and so that the pastor can see me when I come over and shake his hand. No, no, no. We are all called to full-time ministry. And here, here's what I want to say to you it, as uh, I'm getting ready to wrap this up. You know, back in the early 1990s, uh, Barna Institute, which is a chief research group that talks to you know, different segments of society, they came out with a, um, a study of Christians in our country here in America. And it says this, that that many people, about 70% of, of, all, um, of all the population in the United States consider themselves to be Christians. But yet when you go further to only 20% of that 70% considers themselves to be evangelicals, meaning people that actually live this life worthy of the calling which we receive. Now, there has been later later research done that those numbers have actually dropped. There are many uh, studies that are among the, the youth, amongst people going into, um, into college, that, 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 that percentage is actually lower than that. That many, as they're growing up in their households, they'll, they'll be obedient to their fathers and mothers, and they'll be in church, but as soon as they go to college, uh, the, 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 and have some experience, some freedoms, they express themselves differently, and, and maybe they leave their faith altogether. In today's society, our church is considered to be intolerant, to be judgmental. It, it used to be when I grow up, when you have a um, a moral crisis or or a uh, uh, an emergency in your life that the church is where you go. Today, it's considered number three or four of the places you would go when you're going through something in your life. We are no longer the place that people turn to when they need help. They'll go to places like psychologists and therapists and, and places like that before they'll ever turn to the church or even turn to the Lord himself. And and I, I, I see that as, as as a tragedy in our lifetime, in our generation. What is it that's gonna cause us to turn this thing around? This is happening on our watch, in our generation. I believe as a, as a man even called into ministry, um, that, that this is something that, that, that the Lord is even going to hold into account. And, and I, wanna, I wanna share this one story as I, I try to answer this question. What do we do now? I was uh, having a conversation with a, a friend of mine named Jackie a few years ago, and I was inviting her to be a part of a church plan and a ministry movement and a mission field. And uh, she was actually, as I was interviewing her, she was interviewing me as well. Is, is this the ministry that she wants to be a part of? Um, and she asked me a question. She says, Pastor Daniel, what is your beliefs about spiritual gifts? And this is what I said. I believe that each of one of us, God has gifted us. And I don't believe that we will reach this generation without utilizing the gifts which God has given us. You see, it, it's not about orthodoxy. It's not about church attendance. It's not even about how many Bible verses you know and, and how many potlucks you have attended. But what is the gift that God has used? What is the gift that God has given you that you haven't even used yet? I would encourage you to, to go through these and find, find the definitions of what it means to be an apostle. An apostle is somebody is I, I consider a pioneer, you know, someone that's entrepreneurial, kind of somebody like Star Trek, amen, that, to boldly go where nobody else has gone before. And to lay down a foundation, which is Christ, to reach a people for Christ, to do something different, 
amen to, to pioneer in a city or in a in a place which nobody else and nobody else is doing nobody else is doing that same thing a prophet is somebody that that uh that wages the status quo whether it be in sociologically governmentally and, and takes it to the measure of christ and say this is not right and heralds the gospel and heralds correction and is seen as somewhat of a uh you know someone as as, as being even judgmental sometimes because they're calling people out that's what a prophet does i mean and i know that other people said no 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 prophecy is somebody that's heard from god and, and tells them about the future yeah it does that too but i'm talking about definition here okay uh an evangelist is is easy it, you know it's someone that's constantly reaching out to people giving them a message of hope through jesus uh, uh, a pastor or a shepherd is, is is simply that someone that's nurturing to a flock or to a community and a teacher is somebody who who goes through and makes sure that everybody understand what the gospel, what the Bible actually says, and how that applies to you. What what is your gift? As I shared these definitions to you, does something ring out? Does something uh, just say, you know what? I I think he, Pastor Daniel was talking about me. Could it be? R really, in reality, I'm not talking about you. It's the Lord that's speak, reaching out to you. For us to, to impact our world, for us to impact our society, we need to live a life worthy of the calling in which we've received. To, to live a life that is renewed, letting go of the things that are behind and, 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 and grasping on the things that's in front of us. Amen. That, that we may attain to the things in which Christ Jesus has attained to us, has laid hold of us. And that's found in Philippians chapter 3. We, we, we must exercise the gifts. What is your gift? Why even have a gift if you're not going to use it? Amen. And, and we must live a life according to the calling. There's a calling for each and every one of us. You know, my prayer as as I as I was getting ready for this message, I I, I prayed that that somebody, in, in, maybe that's still in their youth, would would hear this and and sense a calling into ministry. But yet, I'll, also I believe that there's a that that God is actually using this message for those who. Who, who are maybe a little bit older like myself and, and and feels that, oh man, but I missed it. I missed it. No, you haven't. As long as there is breath in your lungs, as long as God is breathing life into you, God can use you. And so, that, so today, I, I just want to pray for the church today. I know there's a lot of things going on in the church and I uh, I know that there some some churches are getting ready to reopen. And I want to just encourage you. I, I I believe we will miss an opportunity if we go back, if the church goes back to the way it was, to the old normal, and just goes back to church without being the church. Amen. And I I just want to pray for you today. If you're if you're listening to this message and 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 God is just prompting your heart, and you have questions, you 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 want some guidance and direction. Can, can I encourage you to 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 leave a comment on on this section, uh, um, on this video, or send us a message via Instagram or here on Facebook, um, or even Twitter. Uh, send a message out to Promise LA, or or you could even reach us via um, email through Promise Los Angeles at gmail dot com. Um, I want to hear your feedback. I want to hear what God is speaking to you during this time. We hear it all the time that we are living in unprecedented, unprecedented times. But we, we, we serve a God that's known this was going to happen since the beginning of time. And God wants to use you. God wants to, to, to stir up the gift inside of you that you might be used for his glory. Let me tell you this, that when you are used by God, you'll experience no other joy. This has been a, a great walk with the Lord. I This has been a, such an adventure. I want you to experience that too. But you need to live that life, amen, that, that worthy of the calling in which you received. Today, if you're hearing this uh, message, and you're like, I don't even understand what all that stuff is. And I don't even know that I have a relationship with Jesus. Let me tell you this. He loves you. He He wants a relationship with you. 
He, he has a, a, a hope and a future for you. And he just longs for you to come back home. If that's you today, reach out to us. We want to get a Bible into your hands. We want to make sure you understand everything about the gospel. And so today, I just want to pray. Reach out to us. Um, you know, uh, connect with us. If you have any questions, we are here for you. The reasons why we do this on video is because we want to be here for you. Amen. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I uh, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the promises of hope and of power and of victory that you, you have given to your saints, Lord. I thank you, dear Father God, that you have counted us worthy to serve you. And that even now that you're 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 working something in us and through us that you might use us, Father. So bless the work of our hands, we pray. Guide us, direct us, dear Lord, and, and through the reading of your word, Lord, and fellowship, whatever it may be, Father God, I just pray that you would minister to us like only you can. Bless this time, we pray, Lord God. I thank you and I praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today, if uh, you have prayed alongside of me and, and you again, you want to reach out, whether you're you're listening to this message now live or, or you're listening to it later on down the road, um, join us prayer meeting uh, Thursday nights. We always have a great time of worship. We always have a great time of reading the word and we want to pray for you for whatever needs that you might have. Um, you know, again, use our our our. Uh, our, our ways to, to, to connect with us, if you would. And we just want to be here for you. Amen. We want to be able to reach the people of LA and all of Southern California. God bless you. I hope you have a great week. And um, I hope to see you soon here on video. And for those of you down in the MacArthur Park area, we love you. We miss you. We long to see you again soon. Amen. To God be the glory.